The code in this lesson is almost the same as the code in the previous lesson. There is one minor change which makes a big change in the appearance on the screen. Now just like in the previous example, this one draws quadratic curves. It uses the same rectangular dots to represent the ends of the lines and the control point. Even the X and Y settings for the ends of the lines are the same, but the only difference is the control points are no longer at the center of the lines. Because the curving of the lines follows the positions of the control points, the curvature is no longer symmetric. Here, let me show you. Here they are, the same lines as before, but the curves are different. The first one, on the left, has its control point near one of the end points, and it causes the curved portion of that line to move toward that end. Now, this can actually be quite useful. Look at those three points on the left as defining the corner of a rectangle that's sort of angled off a bit toward the side. That is, the rectangle is not sitting flat on the screen. Using this kind of cornering can be used to add nice rounded corners to a rectangle that isn't square with the screen. In a later lesson, I'll be showing you how to combine curves and other things into a single shape, and they can all be combined and stored as a single object and drawn or filled with a single method call. The two middle lines are the same vertical lines we had before, but the control points have been moved off center. As you can see, the one on the left has been moved so far down that it's gone past the end point. The rule of thumb is this. The curvature point of the line will move directly toward the control point, and the line itself appears to move about halfway from where it would be over to the control point. This isn't official or in the documentation or anything, but that's what it looks like. That's the results you get. As I said, these are only segments of a larger figure, and we'll be combining them all together in a later lesson.